because sometimes we just can't make it on our own. But that's why we gotta stick together! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie sidekicks. Pedro, just listen to your heart. For this list, we've looked at companion characters or sidekicks from the movies. Well, you said it, Chewie. A companion is anyone or anything that regularly helps or advises a film's main protagonist, sometimes on a physical journey or else throughout life in general. Ready, everybody? <laughs> Number 10, Nick Goose Bradshaw, Top Gun. High pressure situations can make or break a friendship. For Maverick and Goose, it was definitely the former. Maverick's as reckless as it's possible to be behind the controls of a fighter plane, but Goose, as radar intercept officer, ensures at least a little sanity remains within the cockpit. God damn it! Maverick's just engaging! As their differing personalities complement each other, it's clear that these two individuals are the perfect team. That's good. <laughs> a devoted family man, Goose's safety is in Maverick's hands almost every day. I got a family to think about. I can't afford to blow this. And Maverick cares more for his friend's life than for his own. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! Number 9. Donkey, Shrek. Can I stay with you? By our definition, a companion has to be useful in the event of a journey. A journey is exactly what Shrek is undertaking as he seeks to reclaim his beloved swamp. And he'll not be traveling alone. Why are you following me? Donkey's on the one hand talkative, troublesome, and downright annoying. But on the other, he's lovable and learned in life. If that don't work, your breath certainly will get the job done, cause you definitely need some Tic Tacs or something, cause your breath stinks! Even in the land of make-believe, this pairing is an unexpected one. But it works. And that's largely down to this magnificent mule, this awesome ass, this indispensable donkey. Oh, no! this is gonna be fun! We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. Number eight, Doug Up. My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. Carl Fredrickson had eyes for only one companion in his life. But when he's forced to find Paradise Falls without his beloved Ellie, he finds himself playing host to a variety of new, largely unwanted friends. He made me this color so that I may talk, squirrel! Russell, the wilderness explorer, bounces with positivity. But Doug the dog is just impossibly lovable. Can we keep him, please, please, please? No. But it's a talking dog! It's just a weird trick or something. An outcast within his own kind, this canine is man's best friend with extra lashings of loyalty. I was hiding under your porch because I love you. Carl isn't always too impressed by him, but even an angry old man can't say no to that face. Or that voice. Hey, that is the bird. I have never seen one up close, but this is the bird. May I take your bird back to camp as my prisoner? Number 7. Dory Finding Nemo Hi, I'm Dory. A good companion is one who's committed to the collective cause. A great companion is one who's committed to the collective cause, despite continual memory loss. No, it's true. I forget things almost instantly. It runs in my family. Well, I mean, at least I think it does. Before their chance meeting, Dory knew nothing of Marlin or Nemo, or Clownfish in general. A modest and unassuming creature, she lived by her own simple slogan, just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim, swim. Dory no singing. As unhelpful as an amnesiac might have been in an ocean-wide search, Dory is determined to reunite father and son. She is a first-rate fish. Hey, we can look together. I'm Dory. I'm Nemo. Nemo? Number six, Walter Sobchak, the Big Lebowski. Shut the f up, Donnie. This guy is so unlikable, he's entirely likable. Walter, will you just <laughs> shut the f up? A narrow minded, condescending, misogynistic man, he's always at the dude's side. Except on Saturdays. He can't do Saturdays. I told that crowd a f thousand times I don't roll on Shabbos. Soap Jack's a Vietnam War veteran, and don't we all know it? Look, Larry, have you ever heard of Vietnam? For him, even the most trivial of instances relates back to Saigon. Much to Jeff Bridges' bewilderment. What was that shit about Vietnam? Dude, I'm sorry. What the fuck does anything have to do with Vietnam? Dude, I'm what sorry. the fuck are you talking about? There's a very strange method to this guy's madness, though. 
And it's that which makes him best friend material. Time for plan B. You might want to watch out that front window, Larry. An avalanche of advice. While most of it's baloney, some of it's brilliant. You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens, Larry? Number five, Dr. John Watson, Sherlock Holmes. Watson, this is exceptional. As we are coming to realize, the companion character very rarely gets a lot of the limelight. Never is that more true than for Jude Law's Dr. Watson. Why would I not be invited to my own brother's country home? Watson, now you're not making any sense. You're not human. The friend and colleague of the famous Sherlock Holmes, he's an essential part of the problem-solving pair, but an outrageously underappreciated one as well. John, shouldn't we help him down? No, 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 I hate to cut him off midstream. Carry on. Despite constant frustration and occasional foolhardiness, despite Holmes forgetting of his bachelor party and wedding, Watson never lets the detective down. As they say in London, he's a real diamond geezer. Oh, it's nice to see you, Watson. Number four, Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger, the Harry Potter franchise. Do you mind? Everywhere else is full. When you turn up at school as the most famous wizard in the world, with no real idea why, then making real friends can be difficult. I'm Ron, by the way. Ron Weasley. I'm Harry, Harry Potter. So, so it's true. Luckily for Harry Potter, he sifted through the glory hunters and celebrity stalkers to find Ron and Hermione. I'm Hermione Granger, and you are? Ron's brave, Hermione's brainy, and they're both incredibly loyal. <laughs> Trouble follows Harry, but so do these two, picking up points for Gryffindor along the way. Ron, maybe I should do it. Forming one of the most famous friendships in all of film and literature, Three's not a crowd, it's a comfort. Stop, stop, stop. You're going to take someone's eye out. Besides, you're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. You do it then if you're so clever. Number three, Chewbacca, the Star Wars franchise. Chewie here tells me you're looking for passage to the Alderaan system. Flying into third position, we have a companion who can't speak English and can't control his body hair. Chewie, jam its transmissions. It would be as well to let it go. It's too far out of range. Not for long. It matters not on the Millennium Falcon, though, as Han Solo has in Chewbacca the very best of co-pilots. Chewie, get us out of here! Oh my, I'd forgotten how much I hate space travel. The world-famous Wookiee is never too far away from Harrison Ford Solo, and has also become arguably the most recognizable character within the entire Star Wars saga. In this case, actions and expressions definitely speak louder than words, as Chewie proves the chum that we all wish we had. Number 2. Samwise Gamgee, The Lord of the Rings Franchise Sam. I'm glad you're with me. Frodo cannot be considered as especially fortunate, but when Sam was caught dropping eaves and given the role as Mr. Baggins' cohort, well, that was a real stroke of luck. Thought you wanted to see the old Sam. I do, more than anything. The Hobbit is as heroic as the ring bearer, if not even more so. He'll follow Frodo into the river when he knows he cannot swim, fight off the armies of Mordor, and physically carry his friend at their journey's end. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo. The ones that really mattered. Full of darkness and danger they were. And sometimes you didn't want to know the end. Because how could the end be happy? He made a promise. Don't you leave him, Samwise Gamgee. And he doesn't mean to. Give me your hand! Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Hakuna Matata! It means no worries. Hakuna Matata. Look, you're my best friend, so don't take this the wrong way. In 20 years, if you're still living here, coming over to my house to watch the Patriots game, still working construction, I'll f***ing kill you. Vote for Pedro. Vote for Pedro. Vote for Pedro. Vote for Pedro. Vote for, Vote for Pedro. You know what I want? Thought of this the other day. A line of blue news, right? With my name written on the back of chick's asses. Huh? 
Number 1. Garth Algar, The Wayne's World Franchise This is my best friend, Garth Algar. Hi. We finish things off with a rock and roll wingman unlike any other. Galileo! Galileo! Being friends with Wayne Campbell is a full-time profession, and Garth is the perfect candidate for the job. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! While Wayne is an outgoing, unthinking extrovert, Garth is a little more conservative and a lot more perceptive than he's given credit for. You know, I love what you do on the show. <laughs> I mean, I look at you and I just laugh and laugh. The amiable anchor around which Wayne's world orbits. He's unfalteringly loyal and unforgettably funny. Tomato. Where Wayne would be without him is absolutely anybody's guess. In truth, he's the male version of a Abraham Lincoln. If she were a president, she'd be Abraham Lincoln. Do you agree with our list? Will somebody get this big walking carpet out of my way? Which filmic friend did we forget? Hang in there, mini-me. For more dependable top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. It all sounds great when you say it like that, but... The truth is, most of that was just luck.